I'm fired up that so many of you are here. Betty Sigenthaler just told me it's a, a record crowd, and that's a good thing because we're all here to keep the triangle of communication open. That is, we're on one side, you're on the other, and your children in the middle, and there are some adolescents who you've heard me say just want to flatten it out, and uh, this is good. We're here to keep it open. We're here to continue to strengthen our partnership for your children's benefit, for their growth and development. I'm fired up for the opportunity to thank you, first and foremost, for sharing your children with us, but also for the countless ways that you support Millbrook and uh, our never-ceasing effort to get better, to do what we do in even better and more meaningful ways. I'm fired up about the outstanding program that Betty Sigenthaler and Barbara Gatsky have put together uh, with our colleagues for all of you over these days on campus. Feeling pretty good about the weather. <laughs> I get blamed when it's not good. I'm not taking any credit. And I'm fired up for a chance to share with you a bit of what I've been talking about and we've been talking about with your children so that perhaps you can join in that conversation with us. So that begins with our mission. In a community where every student is known and needed, Millbrook School prepares its graduates for college and for lives of meaning and consequence by instilling the values of Respect, integrity, stewardship, service, and curiosity. Respect, integrity, stewardship, service, and curiosity. By later this afternoon, I hope you can recite those. <laughs> if you can already, because they're going to be an important part of what we're going to be talking with you about at one o'clock. They're an answer, by the way, to a lot of questions we have as parents in the 21st century. And each year we focus on one of those core values. Respect is our theme for 2018-19. As some of you know, we begin every academic year with convocation, as so many schools do. And <clears throat> I'm uh, privileged most years to be the speaker. In this, our year of respect, I describe being interviewed by Avery Garhart, class of 2021, for an article in our school newspaper, The Silo, about respect. Avery asked me to describe what respect looks like. Avery's very smart, and Avery asks hard questions. So she wanted to know, what does respect look like, Mr. Castratano, in athletics, in social situations? throughout the entire campus. You know, initially, I was stumped, which surprised me. I thought to myself, to myself, the answer should be on the tip of my tongue. Uh, respect looks like respect. Showing respect means, you know, being respectful. Fortunately, I didn't say that. <laughs> I knew I needed to do better. Soon after, I watched the documentary about Fred Rogers. You know, Mr. Rogers? By the way, your children don't, which is interesting. Uh, I asked them how many knew who Mr. Rogers was, and there was just a smattering of hands. And having watched the documentary, I knew that it hasn't been on the air for, I think, 15 years. So Avery and Mr. Rogers helped me to clarify my answer, my answers, and uh, my description of what respect looks like. I suggested in this convocation talk that respect is synonymous with love, <clears throat> which begins with a love for oneself, 
a love that creates acceptance of ourselves as the individuals we are and the individuals we should be. A love that helps us deal with our, deal with our fears and anxieties. And to understand that what we think of ourselves is more important than what anyone thinks of us. Excuse me. A love that encourages us to take care of ourselves. To do our best to eat right, stay organized, use our planners, exercise, get enough sleep. Long conversation I had with one of my advisees on Tuesday. And by the way, this love is not to be confused with narcissism, a self-love that is loud and harsh and says, look at me, look at me. I added that Mr. Rogers would say that respect is a love that inspires us to be optimistic, patient, kind, humble, understanding, and perhaps most important, willing to listen. You know, in this way, that love and respect helps us to manage our destructive emotions. The desire to judge, to criticize without justification, to respond with anger, to feel and express hatred. Respect is a love that helps us to become our best selves. It's a love that helps us to help others to become their best selves. It's a love that connects us to each other. It's necessary, essential to build a healthy community, one that will support us, all of us, through the good times and the challenging times, the inevitable challenging times. I added that this is exactly right for Millbrook, a community where we strive each and every day to balance unconditional love with accountability along with remembering those five core values, I want you to remember this. We strive each and every day <clears throat> to balance unconditional love with accountability. Where one of the ways we express our love is through holding ourselves accountable to our community expectations. Expectations which make this a safe, healthy, open, an inclusive place to learn and to grow. I then asked the congregation of students and faculty to take a moment to reflect on someone who has shown that love, who's helped someone through difficult times, people who've believed in us when maybe we didn't believe in ourselves. people who have been guides along the path to our best selves, and we paused. And then I concluded that that is what respect looks like. And I have to admit, you know, it makes me a little weepy. <laughs> so, each and every day, this is what we're talking about. And here's what I'd like you to do. As I said earlier, join in that conversation. <laughs> you may make me feel bad, but ask your children if they remember anything from that talk. <laughs> and don't, don't, don't be honest with me. <laughs> I think that'll be a great way for you us to continue to strengthen this partnership, for you to hear what they think, 
uh, and how that conversation here on campus is going. One way we're also, oops, <laughs> actually Betty Sigenthaler just said, you know, we need to build a new one of these lecterns, and she's right, the lip isn't big enough. One of the ways we want to show that respect and strengthen that partnership, and this is the brainchild of Betty and Barbara, is that Michael Thompson and I are going to have a conversation with you this afternoon at 1 o'clock. If you don't know who Michael is, uh, and I'm preempting Barbara's introduction a little later this afternoon, but he is a PhD psychologist. He is a New York Times bestselling author about adolescence. Uh, you may know his best-known book and his bestseller, Raising Cain, Protecting the Emotional Lives of Boys. Um, he's Millbrook class of 1965. That's a good thing. Uh, he's been our consulting psychologist for over 25 years. Uh, and he's a close personal friend. He uh, has helped Linda and me raise our three boys. Now 35, 33, and 28. <laughs> so it's been going on for a while. Michael and I have great empathy for you as parents, and this is what we're going to talk about. What is happening to you? Because we think that you are facing challenges that no generation of parents has ever faced. I don't want to get too deep into this afternoon, but you are facing gen three specific uh, challenges and realities that no generation in the history of humankind has faced. So that's the, what's that called? That's the trailer. <laughs> uh, so I strongly encourage you to attend. It, it will be from 1 to 2.30. 1.30. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> 1.30 to 3. 1.30 to 3. Uh, and there'll be lots of time to ask questions. And then, for your benefit, after that, at what time? Three o'clock to five. Three o'clock to five. Three thirty to five. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, uh, Michael will be in the class of 2018 meeting hall, formerly known as Prum, uh, to answer any questions you might have and to spend more time with you. So I think that means that I have about. We have about five more minutes together, and I'm happy to answer a question or two before you move on with the rest of your day. Yes? So you may have to make a choice. <laughs> yes? Right. Will the theme of um, respect be um, throughout the school year? And like, will you have discussions during chapel talks? So the question is, will the theme of respect be carried on throughout the uh, school year? And the answer is yes. Our first form of the year was incredibly powerful. We have about three to five forums on Friday nights throughout the school year. Um, uh, we had a professor from Northwestern uh, University, uh, a poet um, who was from Nigeria, uh, who ha was imprisoned three times and on death row in Nigeria for protesting uh, the government. And his, his, um, his, uh, his name is Chris Albani. Christopher Albani, watch his TED talk. Chilling. I can't even begin to describe it because it's so unsettling. Chris Albani, A-L-B-A-N-I. So Chris was here. And then Liz Elizabeth Acevedo, who is a uh, spoken word poet. A, uh, an award-winning spoken word poet. Also, uh, she's Latino, Latina, excuse me. She told a fabulous story that resonated with the kids about being in a, her PhD program and the pr professor asking the students to describe something meaningful 
to them that they were going to write about. She described what was meaningful to her, and the professor dismissed it as insignificant. <clears throat> and at that moment, she, just, she decided no one was ever going to silence her again. So the answer is yes. We have speakers. Um, the, the Cam Hardy spoke beautifully in chapel the other day about the fact that there are two kinds of people. There are hosts and there are guests. And guests are entitled. They expect to be taken care of. They expect to be guests. They expect to be served. They expect to be taken care of. And then there are hosts. Hosts, of course, take care of others and go out of their way to make people welcome and cared for. And, of course, at Millbrook, we're all hosts. So we're doing a lot of different things. And most chapel talks are given by students, as you know. And so they're, they're on that topic as well, and we'll have more speakers. Excellent question. Thank you. Anything else? Is that helpful to hear what we're talking about? Yeah. Kind of makes sense? I think we would all agree it's also more important than ever. Right? A, a mission that was, uh, has its roots in 1931 when Edward Pulling founded the school is more relevant and, dare I say, more necessary today than it ever has been. Which is why I will end where I began by saying we're so grateful to you for sharing your children with us. We're so grateful for the many ways that you support us. And that includes, and we'll get into this a little more this afternoon, when you let us know how we can get better, what we can do to partner even more effectively with you. This is a two-way street. So thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you around. <laughs>